what better way to celebrate Halloween than to talk about the dreaded black beard algae? That's right, I had a over two year battle with it and I wanna share how I turned a horrible mess of a tank to a beautiful thriving and once again green aquarium. Hi, my name is Irene with Girl Talks Fish, here with practical tips on nanofish and planted aquariums. And when I first encountered Blackbeard algae, it was actually in this 20 gallon community tank version 3.0, which mostly had Anubias and Java fern. And it didn't look like your stereotypical blackish gray, little tufts of hair that are sticking up. Instead, it showed up on the Anubias leaves as this hard, flat, black dusting, almost like green spot algae, but black instead. And uh, nothing could remove it. Like I tried using my hands, a toothbrush, the algae eaters, nothing. And eventually it took over my entire version 4.0 of this tank, which you guys know as the Shy Guys Jungle Tank. It looked terrible. By the time I took out, took down that tank, I ended up taking all of those blackbeard algae covered plants and sticking them in my 10 gallon breeding tank because I didn't know what to do with them, but it seemed like such a waste of money if I threw everything away. Method number one I tried is very popular on the internet. I got my recipe from Mark's Shrimp Tanks, and basically it involves using 3% hydrogen peroxide, which you can easily and cheaply get from your local drugstore if you live in the United States. And the first thing you wanna do is turn off your filter and your light, because this stuff is very light sensitive, breaks down very quickly. And then you're going to add uh, two and a half to three teaspoons of hydrogen peroxide for every 10 gallons of water. Go ahead and let that soak for one full hour. Afterwards, you can turn on the filter and the light too as well if you would like. Repeat the treatment up to three to five times a week. And in Mark's and my experiences, it's never harmed any of the dwarf shrimp and the fish that we've kept because this stuff, again, breaks down very quickly into water and oxygen. Unfortunately, it also didn't have any effect on my black beard algae, despite me using this method for, I'd say, I don't know, three to four weeks. So in the end, it didn't work out for me, but a lot of people have reported success using this recipe. Method number two also uses hydrogen peroxide, but this time we're gonna spray the stuff directly on the leaves when they're out of water. So what you'll want to do is either uh, remove the plant if it's attached to driftwood or rock, or you can lower the water in your tank until those leaves are revealed in open area. And then what I would do is uh, pour a fresh batch of hydrogen peroxide into a spray bottle, spray it on the leaves, let it sit for five minutes, and then put the plant back in water, or again, fill up the tank so that all of the plant leaves are back under water. Now make sure not to leave this stuff on your plant leaves for too long because I think one time I left an Anubias Nana Petite out and I forgot about it and it was on the leaves for, I don't know, 15, 30 minutes, and that poor plant definitely died. Unfortunately for me, this method also didn't work for some reason. I don't know why. I even bought a fresh bottle of this to make sure, you know, it hadn't gone bad. And I soaked an uplift tube in raw hydrogen peroxide for 24 hours and nothing happened. What? So why isn't hydrogen peroxide working for me when a lot of people on the internet claim to have success with it? Well, interestingly, Wikipedia says the rate of decomposition increases with a rise in temperature, concentration, and pH, with cool dilute acidic solutions showing the best stability. So what that means is maybe my tap water, which has 8.0 pH, is too quickly weakening or destabilizing the hydrogen peroxide for it to have any effect, at least in method number one where I dose the whole tank. So if you are having trouble with using hydrogen peroxide as well, keep watching. Method number three is to use an algicide like liquid carbon, which, unlike what many companies say, is not a replacement for CO2 injection. It is an algicide. And you will, well, word of warning, if you decide to use this method, some plants are very sensitive to it, like Valsinaria. So make sure you Google all the plants that are in your aquarium to make sure they're not going to die once you start dosing this. But some famous brands that you'll see are Flourish Excel, API CO2 Booster, and I am using Aquarium Co-op's Easy Carbon because I really like the easy to use pump head over here. It just says one pump per 10 gallons. If you have a low tech tank like me, try every other day versus a high lining tank would be every day. So that's what I did. For two weeks straight, I dosed this every other day and nothing. 
So then I increased it to every day for another two weeks. And the only effect I saw was that the Anubias started turning yellow, so that's not good. But the Blackbeard algae, no effect once again. Well, I mean, okay. Technically, there was an effect. I definitely saw a lot of cloudy water caused by floating particulate. Most likely it was kind of burned off pieces of algae <laughs> floating everywhere. But visually, from the big scheme of things, I could not see any difference in the algae growth. It seemed to be just as thick and lush as ever. So again, I'm ready to rip my hair out at this point. Like what's left? Thankfully, method number four finally worked, and that was, again, using that liquid carbon, but this time with a pipette for direct spot treatment. So I'll have a link in the description for this pipette. But the first thing I did was take a big old squirt of it and then apply it to that heater in the back. It used to be totally covered with Blackbeard algae, and I waited a week, and it totally disappeared. Based on those initial results, I decided to try it on plants. Now, I don't have any footage of me treating Blackbeard algae with it. Instead, this is hair algae that looks fairly similar, but green, but same concept. Basically, turn off your filter. You don't have to turn off the light because it's not light sensitive. Get a pipette of this stuff and then treat one to two leaves at max. We just want to see how the plants and the algae react to it. Let it sit for three to five minutes, and then you can turn on your filter again. Oh, I forgot to mention that the active ingredient in liquid carbon is very toxic. Like, treat it like bleach, where you don't want to touch it, inhale it, ingest it, any of those kind of things. So if you want to avoid touching the water, because I was applying it underwater, what you can do is lower the water so that your pipette can be underwater, but your hand won't enter the water, or you can choose to wear gloves. And again, make sure to thoroughly wash your hands afterwards, just in case. The next step is to wait one week to see what happens. For me, it took at least like three to four days before the algae started changing color at all, any kind of indication that it was affecting the algae and not the plants. If it works, the next week, go ahead and take another pipette full and then treat maybe five to seven more leaves in your aquarium. You do not want to go trigger happy with this stuff and just start spraying liquid carbon everywhere because you could overdose the tank, plants could start dying, and maybe even affect your animals as well. Once the algae started weakening and dying off, it was finally soft enough for my algae eaters to actually eat the stuff. Normally they won't touch it at all. And then clearing it off the leaves so that the plant can finally photosynthesize again. In the honorable mention category, if you don't want to use chemicals, let's talk about algae eaters. As you may have heard, this blackbeard algae is not very edible to most animals, but I have heard good things about using Siamese algae eaters, Florida flagfish, as well as pandagaras maybe. I haven't personally had experience with them, so I can only tell you about the animals in my tank. I definitely saw the Amano shrimp picking at it, but they didn't seem to make any significant progress at all. And maybe that was because I was, you know, feeding them too much or there wasn't enough Amano shrimp, or they just didn't do well with the type of blackbeard algae that's on the flat surfaces. The mollies and platies, they're always hungry, always picking at any kind of algae really, but I didn't see them ever completely conquer it. It was more like keeping it at bay. My hillstream loaches, on the other hand, were the one animal that was able to remove large swaths of the stuff. The disadvantage is that they mostly only ate it off of flat surfaces, like the large Anubius leaves, and not in little nooks and crannies and corners as much. Also, their performance was pretty inconsistent. They wouldn't remove all of it. And again, maybe this is just because I was feeding the tank and not letting them starve so that they could only look to algae to feed on. If you still need help getting rid of algae, I have a whole playlist of algae killing tutorials over here. Take time to enjoy your aquariums and I'll see you in the next video.